Welcome to By Faith with Frank Shelton. Frank speaks at the schoolhouse. church house, and has even been interviewed at the White House, but is most grateful to speak life into your house. Now, here's Frank Shelton. And it's a privilege to have Frank. It's an with honor us. to be with you, sir. Thank you so Bless much. Bless you. The privilege is mine. Now, I understand you do, among other things, impressions. Yes, sir. Well, well let's start the program. Now, this isn't going to be the program, folks, <laughs> but I want to see some of his impressions. Well, uh, I just had the privilege to preach a revival in Monroeville, Alabama, in an old canvas cathedral. It was a tabernacle tent, kind of like what they did in the past. And when I give the invitation, I can only think of, well, you had Moody and you had Wesley and Spurgeon, <laughs> but my hero is Dr. Billy Graham. And uh, when Billy Graham preached... Uh, just the other day, a woman came into my office and with tears subsiding, said, Dr. Graham, can you help me? I paused with all sincerity, said, ma'am, no, I cannot, but I can lead you to the one who can. She told me she was discouraged, depressed, and thought of death daily. I showed her the scriptures, how Christ climbed Calvary's cross for her. And today you may be watching by way of monitor. I'd like to send you some free literature, right? Billy Graham, that's all the address you'll need. Perhaps you're in Canada. That's P.O. Box 844, Winnipeg, Manitoba. And some of you in the balcony, it would take two to three minutes. Believe me, the buses will come. You come forward as you give your heart to Christ. After you come to Christ, I'll send you some literature. My wife Ruth went on to heaven, and I've been ruthless ever since. It's an honor to be with you today, amen? <laughs> but there's only one Billy Graham, but he yes. forever will be 10 feet tall. You know what's neat is my father, I don't come from a long line of preachers. I come from a long line of policemen. I love the Lord, and we love the law enforcement. And my family has protected the last 26 of 28 U.S. presidents. But my dad was a fourth generation DC cop. He retired as the assistant chief of the entire United States Capitol Police. So he was number two out of 2000 DC police officers. He was the chairman on the inaugural committee for Bill Clinton's first inaugural. He was in charge of the entire security for the inauguration. It was the largest attended on the West Front before President Obama recently shattered the record. And when my dad retired, they said, Chief, you protected six presidents. You've been in a room with the prime ministers and popes and heads of state and professional athletes and Hollywood elite. Out of all the people you met, just curious, who's the most influential man on earth you've ever met who came through Washington? Knowing it would be a president, without hesitation, my dad said the two times he shook Billy Graham's hand. And they said, Chief, maybe you didn't understand me. And he said, no, I, I heard you. You said the most influential man. One, I met government's power. But when I shook his hand, I met God's power. And he said uh, he was also the president to 12 U.S. presidents. Yes. So Dr. Graham uh, <clears throat> forever will be 10 feet tall to me. Wow. And to me, too. Amen. Amen. Well, I thank God for your ministry. You guys are reaching the globe. Amen. Um, well, we're doing our best. And Amen. you never know who's sitting at the other end of Praise this. God. Amen. It could be somebody in guitar or... That's right. Some Dubai. Or That's right. Some foreign place. Amen. And they may be sitting there and saying, who is that guy, Frank? Yeah, amen. And the good <laughs> thing is they don't need to know Frank, but they do know, need to know him. Yes. And uh, I really believe tonight is many people's night. I just believe uh, that God loves the least. He loves the last. Yes. And he loves the lost. Yes. And I was told if you go after the folks no one wants to know, God will introduce you to the folks everyone wants to know. And I've learned whether they're Hollywood or homeless or Harvard grads, at the foot of the cross, the ground is level and we all, all need Jesus. Same. 
So, you know, I just flew in from uh, Reagan today, um, and the major monuments on the mall form the cross. It's the U.S. Capitol, the Washington Monument, and the Lincoln Memorial in a straight vertical line. But to the right is the Jefferson Memorial, and dead to the left is 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the White House. So it's the Capitol, the Monument, the Lincoln, the Jefferson, and the White House, and darn if the major monuments on the mall form the cross. And a lot of times when I'm flying in, I'll tap a businessman, and especially on a red-eye flight, and I said, sir, do you know the monuments form the cross? And he rolls his eyes, but forget he's sitting next to a DC tour guide. And sure enough, he can see it. And I remember that song we sang as a kid, the way of the cross leads home. Yes. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go, that the way of the cross leads home. And I went to the Billy Graham Library in the front door in Charlotte, North Carolina, is a 55-foot glass cross. And in order to get into the museum, you can't go around the cross, you can't get beneath the cross, you can't go above the cross, you have to go through the cross. And it's no different uh, when we get to heaven. You can't go around the cross, no. you can't get beneath the cross, you can't inherit the cross, you can't earn the cross. You can't even buy the cross. It's through the cross of Christ that we get to heaven. And maybe someone's watching today. If you've never been to the cross, you don't know Christ. Amen. And that's the truth. Amen. No matter how much money you have, mm. no matter who you know or it's the truth. who you've known, Amen. doesn't make any difference. It's not fame, it's faith. Yes. And faith in Christ. Because some people have a faith in a park bench, but that's not going to go too far. <laughs> Amen. Now, I read this book, and I was intrigued by okay. Carrying Greatness. Yes, sir. Now, I, I thought, what is this on the front? Why? Great question. Why do you have somebody, and I guess it's a guy. And it's a pregnant woman. A pregnant woman. Yeah. Was it your wife? No, but no. it very well could have been. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And with a heart. Yes. Now, she, whoever she is, always has potential of greatness. Amen. That's a great word. Yeah. Always, you don't know who you're going to deliver. Wow. That's profound. You know, when Mary was carrying Jesus, Elizabeth was carrying John. Yes. One woman was too old. The other one, they said, was too young. One woman, Elizabeth, was married and then intimate and couldn't get pregnant to save her life. And a girl named Mary wasn't even married, didn't even try and did. Because what's impossible with man is possible with God. Now, these are two women. One's too old, one's too young. One's married, one's not. And they're both carrying boys named Jay. One will be Jesus, the other will be John. And what's neat is when Mary came in with Elizabeth and said, hi, um, to Elizabeth, Mary had Jesus, but Elizabeth had John. And the Bible says that John jumped and the lad leapt and the boy, not even birthed to be a Baptist, goes bonkers. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> and have you ever thought, why did he jump? Well, one, John in his mama's womb knew Jesus before he was even born. And then I was told in courtrooms all across of America, you always hear two words, whether you're a plaintiff or a defendant, a judge or jury, a janitor or a attorney wearing a thousand dollar suit. You always hear two words at the beginning of every court case, all rise. And out of protocol, you stand for the one who wears the robe. And I submit to you that when John was in Elizabeth's womb and Jesus was in Mary's womb, when Mary walked in to say hi to Elizabeth, he stood up, he stood up and all he heard was all rise. And I believe that's why he jumped and the lad left and he went bonkers because he knew Jesus before he was even born. And because he leapt for Jesus before he was born, that's why he was able to live for Jesus while he was alive. And that goes to the cover of the book. The next time we see a woman, I hate to say this, but sometimes the Christian army is the only army that wounds its own. Yes. So when you see a girl walking across the street, we shouldn't say, was it, uh, was it out of wedlock or was it an adulterous affair or was she raped? She's carrying greatness. And the subtitle of the book is called From the Womb to the tomb. And the last chapter in that book is called Adoption is Greater Than Abortion. And I just believe that when we see someone with child, she's carrying greatness. And then at the bottom picture on the front 
is six Marines carrying a flag draped casket at Arlington. Two years ago, I got a call from my sister screaming at the top of her lungs, pray for Aaron. I thought she was talking to female Aaron. They said, no, Aaron with an A, my nephew's godfather, my brother-in-law's best friend, my friend since high school of 25 years. He had done six tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was Marine of the year, not of his division, the entire United States Marine Corps. He was in Afghanistan, got hit by an IED, blew off both of his legs. We were praying that God would spare him. I called my friend, Marine evangelist, Tim Lee, who lost his legs in Nam in 71. And if anyone knew about limbs and losing limbs for God and country was Tim, we put out a prayer chain, but within a matter of hours, he died. And when they carried his casket at Arlington, I knew they weren't carrying America's trash. They were carrying America's treasure and Colonel Oliver North showed up and gave the eulogy. So when a hero calls you a hero, he certainly wasn't a zero. Yes. And thank God for those men and women in armed service. Were Blessed you are the there when they? Yes, I was at the funeral. My sister, the military calls it a dignified transfer. And my sister was on the flight line at Dover, Delaware. Cause again, it was my nephew's godfather, my brother-in-law's best friend, my friend from high school. And they let my sister stand next to the widow as that body came back and touched down at Dover. And she was with the family. And then we were all at Arlington. And here's another thing, it takes 30 days to be buried at Arlington. But because he was Marine of the Year, he was in the ground in four business days. Wow. And it was one of the, it was arguably the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Mm. And, but from the womb to the tomb. You're gonna make me cry. Oh, well, you know what? With the Lord, there are tears of joy. Yes. But uh, I just thank God because all of us, uh, you carry greatness, your wife carries greatness, those watching in Dubai carry greatness. Yeah. But the sad thing is, Mr. Bob, is you can either carry greatness or bury greatness. And too many people have taken their dreams and their visions and their God-given assignment. Because I was told, you've heard it said, the wealthiest places in the world is not corporate America or boardrooms, it's cemeteries yes. where people, instead of living by faith, got shackled in fear and they buried greatness. And yes. I just think we're going to have to give an account for not only every idle word, but every task that was left undone. Yes. So I tell people, swing for the fence because yes. you can't strike out with the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you sure can't. We have no need to doubt God. God's word has been proven. It was God's will that none should be sick and suffer and declared I will take all sickness away from thee. Faith is not something we have to get. It is something we already have. But we were just children and of God. God healed me. Rejoicing in our Jesus Street revival took love. place right on this world. Most great revival church in the world. Worldwide people all over the world spreading the story of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I on the Lord did call He did not let me call in vain But he washed my sins away And from that hour he gave me power And I know that he dwells within Okay, I'm with Frank, and we are here at the United Nations. We were just down below, and we were laying hands on every country. Thank you because of you. Welcome to Brenda's Back, the little show I do, Frank. No, you are amazing, Frank. Thank you. What made you decide to bring all these world leaders, and it might me, to this UN roundtable discussion? Well, you know the initials B-E is halfway spelling the best, and Brent oh, Atkinson, you're the best. You're so good. I'm like, one of the rest. No. But no, the test, this is where it gets good, but it gets God. 
To whom much is given, much, much is, required. is required. Amen. And for someone watching, the doors you open for others, God will open for Amen. you. Amen. And Aww. Bible college taught us how to promote God, but we fail at promoting others. Wow. I think we need to look at each other as colleagues, not competition. Yeah. Oh, and love when that. you just help others, God smiles. Absolutely. So the world smiles because now we're all on the same team. Amen. And uh, there's one of these, but Brenda's a winner. So we're going to try to touch the world, not for our glory, but for his, because time's running out. Yep. And Jesus is on the winning side. So we're with you. Amen. Thank you, Frank. No, Love you. The United Nations Association of El Salvador, in support of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, this letter of appointment to Dr. Frank Shelton Jr., the Executive Board of Director of the United Nations Association of El Salvador, UNASB, during its 16 meeting held in New York on February 12, 2019 unanimously decided to welcome the appointment of Dr. Frank Shelton Jr. as a special advisor for the Faith Affair Branch, the United Nations Association of El Salvador, and this appointment is effective for three years of the day. It's signed by um, Madeline Rodriguez as chairperson of the Faith Affair Branch and in my capacity as Secretary General of the organization. We would like to welcome and express our sincere appreciation for your contribution to bring the gospel into the United Nations. I believe this is a special moment in particular because what we really want. Well, hi guys, Dave Kistler here. I'm with my dear friend, Evangelist Frank Shelton. And Frank, you have been really the one used of God to spirit wow. this entire thing Thank at the you. UN today. Talk to just very quickly about how this all came about and what's such a burden on your life. Yeah, well, long story short, I was preaching in Africa three years ago on New Year's Eve. And when I was changing planes on Ethiopia, on the runway were cargo jets, and it said the UN on the tail. The Holy Spirit, Dave, jumped on me. And this is from a Baptist brother. You'll see more of that. Two weeks later, I was invited to come to the UN out of nowhere. And a dear friend of mine is the chairwoman of the Faith Advisory, Madeline Rodriguez, the ambassador, Carlos Garcia, from El Salvador. My wife is from El Salvador. That wasn't even planned. That was God. Mm. And we were sitting around at um, lunch in November, and I just said to the ambassador over lunch, I see these planes crisscrossing the seven continents, and he took his fork out of his mouth. And I said, I believe there's jet streams going back and forth. And he looked at me and his eyes got real big, and I said, that's a Christian delegation where we're gonna bring God and government, the secular and the spiritual, and pastors and politicians coming together to build the kingdom. JC at the UN, he got so excited, he shows me his cell phone, and darn if there wasn't jet streams going back and forth the countries. We met a guy who owns Judah One Airlines, the world's only Christian airlines. He was here at the summit we had today. The Lord has laid on his heart, not only as CEO of an airline, but as a missionary to help take church planners, evangelists, missionaries around the world and we're going to preach the gospel. And who would think that God could use the UN to help further his kingdom? And we're going to share with you in the days ahead a lot more specifics yeah. about this. But here's the phrase that's been on my heart. The gospel to the UN, but Frank, the gospel through the, the UN, UN around the world. A lot more to come, but Amen. I want you to get acquainted with this guy. This thank is my so friend. Much. I thank God so Lord. much for Dr. Frank yeah, Shelton. Thank you, uh, he works for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, and God is using him in great ways. Amen. And Frank, I just want to say this. No, it is an you, honor brother. to know you. Much respect. And, well, likewise, Amen. brother. Praise Keep the Lord. praying, friends. God bless. God bless. Seven point seven billion people call planet Earth home. Sadly, a hundred and fifty two thousand people died today. A hundred and fifty two thousand died yesterday. And a hundred and fifty two thousand will die tomorrow. According to the CDC, two point eight million people die annually. In America alone. From America to Antarctica to Australia, most people have no clue where they will spend eternity. Opposed to sit on the sidelines, we elected to get in the game. Regardless of providing relief during natural disasters, distributing food and clothes to the poor, 
helping eradicate human sex trafficking nationally and globally, influencing influencers, motivating world-class athletes, investing in students at public and private school assemblies, ministering to powerful politicians, counseling heads of state, or preaching the gospel at citywide crusades at home or massive sports stadiums abroad. From coast to coast and around the globe, we exist to reach the lost at any cost. From London, England, Guatemala, the Bahamas, Jamaica, Mexico, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Romania, Paris, Philippines, Brazil, Africa, Tokyo, Pakistan, India. 7.7 billion people call planet Earth home. Sadly, Earth is not our final destination. We have two options, heaven or hell, but not both. And hell is too long to be wrong. We're reaching the world one soul at a time. Time is ticking. People are hurting. And our mission is to offer hope to folks on Main Street to Wall Street. From our house to Hollywood. And schoolhouses. Church houses. And even the White House. Time is ticking. People are hurting. But help is on the way. If we were to follow the footsteps of an ordinary man who had one day been dramatically changed by an extraordinary God, would we believe those steps would journey from the rolling fields of North Carolina to the steps of the White House and beyond? I just felt God was speaking to me, and He said, I want to use you. And I said, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go, and I'll be what you want me to be. I'm yours. Christ belongs to all people. He belongs to the whole world. His gospel is for everyone, whoever you are. He's one of the great evangelists of our nation's history. His crusades are legendary. The size of his crowds were magnificent throughout the years uh, because of uh, the message and because of the messenger. That's the beauty and the greatness and the thrill of God's love. The kind of person that a person in my position wants to know. While preaching to millions around the world, Billy Graham found himself being called upon many times as God's ambassador to world leaders. The ministry of Billy Graham as friend and counselor to U.S. presidents remains to this day unprecedented. In 1950, Billy was asked to visit the White House for the first time to meet with then-President Harry S. Truman. Soon after, every U.S. president since World War II found occasion and reason to call on the advice and friendship of Billy Graham. We need to pray for our president and for those in authority. As the scriptures have told us, he faces tremendous responsibilities. Lyndon Johnson wrote in a personal letter to Billy Graham, my mind went back to those lonely occasions at the White House when your friendship helped to sustain a president in an hour of trial. No one will ever know how you helped to lighten my load or how much warmth you brought into our house. But I know. The reason world leaders have sought his advice is precisely because he doesn't try to tell them what they should do tomorrow, but he does try to show them a way of thinking about the problem 
that adds a new dimension to their thinking. Throughout the world, governmental leaders have been asking the tough spiritual questions of Billy Graham, looking for answers. His ministry as an evangelist bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ has worked to shape the destiny of nations. At the end of these meetings with these communist officials, they would be sitting there in stone silence listening to every word that my father said. And when my father finished speaking, they would say, oh, but Dr. Graham, we have also wondered if there was a God. Talk to us more about how we can know God. So I think he was one of the forces that kept the window open to the human spirit during these oppressive years. Eight years ago, uh, one of the Lord's great ambassadors, the Reverend Billy Graham, went to Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union, and upon returning spoke of a movement there toward more religious freedom. And perhaps he saw it before many of us, because it takes a man of God to sense the early movement of the hand of God. And the same thing with these Chinese leaders that we saw in Russia. They would begin to ask my father spiritual questions. These are the kind of questions that were asked by top Chinese officials and Chinese leaders. Reverend William Billy Graham's untiring evangelism has spread the word of God to every corner of the globe and made him one of the most inspirational spiritual leaders of the 20th century. I think it's through him that I found myself praying even more than a daily basis to give me the wisdom to make decisions that would serve God and be pleasing to Him. Billy Graham, the man, the preacher, the humble farmer's son who helped change the world is a spiritual gift to all of us. Who is this unique person that comes across the pages of history? Who is this Jesus Christ? He's had many opportunities over the years to do other things that he turned down because God had called him to a higher calling and that was to be an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ and to take the gospel to literally the ends of the earth. If you would like to bring Frank to your next event or outreach, visit www.frankshelton.com. To order an autographed copy of Frank's book, Carrying Greatness, go to frankshelton.com and click on Merch. A signed copy is only $25, and if you order now, you'll get free shipping. Don't delay. Order your copy today.